Okay? Uh, just closing the door first. So, uh, hi, I'm Vincent Ounce. I'm yeah, so first, I'm French, so it's not Vincent, it's Vincent, which is quite important, you know. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, what we are doing in the GNOME team, what's new since the last year, uh, what has changed in the workflow, basically. Uh, a lot has changed, and uh, I guess it's quite interesting for that. Uh, but first, uh, let me talk just a bit about myself, because for, I mean, I'm beautiful. I think it's quite clear. Uh, and uh, it's important to show that I'm one of the most beautiful person of the on the planet. So yeah. Uh, also, I'm really serious, as you can see. Uh, but uh, my point is that I'm also oops like that. So uh, stupid, uh, laughing, uh, idiot. You can just come to me, talk to me, uh, make some comments. I will always be happy and have time for you. So don't hesitate to come to me or drop me a mail or whatever. But. So, um, first, uh, the motivation of the GNOME team. Uh, as you probably know, uh, we have quite some, well, we have a small team in, in Novell, inside Novell, who is working on OpenSUSE, uh, integrating GNOME in OpenSUSE. But we want to grow that team and to uh, have people on the com of the community to work on that team, to do all the stuff we're doing. And the question is why? So uh, the first reply is this, that I don't like to work. So I would like other people to do what I'm doing. Um, that's the first reply. But um, it doesn't really work well, because actually I'm working a bit more since we're involving outside people than before. So uh, that's not really the, the, the good answer. The really, really reality actual answer is that we want to do more stuff, we want to move faster, and want, we want something which is better in the end. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that we want to have more package. We want to update all the GNOME package faster. Like if you look at all the other distributions, when there's a new GNOME release, they have all the new versions of GNOME in two days. And we didn't choose to do that. Now we're doing that, actually. We stopped doing that. And we want to, to do that better. What does it mean? Well, we want to have the better packaging. We want to have less bugs. All the user stuff, actually. And uh, it turns out that if you use, well, if you have a community who is doing that, uh, the people who do that care about GNOME. And they will do something of good quality. Because they really care. Uh, that's really a big difference. We, we, when you take people like me, I mean, I care about GNOME, sure, but I'm paid, so I don't care that much, maybe. And uh, that's not true, but I'm trying to explain the point. And uh, so maybe I'm not doing the package that well. If you take the community, they will always do the right thing. That's the point, because they care. So it's a good thing for the long term. Uh, how are we, yeah, some figures first, maybe. Uh, I think that will probably explain the point of the GNOME community. First, the GNOME team maintains 10% 10, 10 of the package in OpenSUSE. So uh, I'm just talking about the package that we have in OpenSUSE factory right now. Really, that's when you look at the numbers, it's really 10%. So that's a lot, really a lot. But you might say that it's all small packages that I know just this small utility. But actually, no, it's really 10%. If you look at the debug size of all packages, it's 10%, really. So it's big. It's really big, big, big. So it's a lot of work. And uh, we need people to do that. Uh, yeah, we're good. The GNOME team is really good. When we released OpenSUSE 11.1, we were frozen, and we were still frozen for a few weeks after that. And we had a small team of volunteers who started working on packaging the new GNOME. And they did that in their own project in the, you know, in the build service. And so we, we merged that after a few weeks. And this resulted in 201 package updated. And they were all done by the community, not novel people. So that's really impressive. 
And if you look at what we did last week, last week we did uh, one packaging day to update to the latest GNOME, because we had a GNOME release last week. We made 100 submissions, basically. That's huge, really. That's, uh, in that, you have probably something like 60 new versions of packages and then fixes to the package. So we pushed all that to GNOME Factory and uh, we, we tried to make sure that everything compiled, everything is working fine, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really a ton of work. The daily life of the GNOME team. Uh, I will try to move past into that because you all know that, I guess. So uh, we have a mailing list which is called OpenSUSE GNOME. We have an IC channel, OpenSUSE GNOME. Uh, we have lots of people on both. If you look at the mailing list, it's usually not that many mails because people talk a lot on IRC actually, so it's good to join both. And if you look at the IRC channel, uh, it's quite friendly. People don't talk that much about OpenCC or GNOME, but they just chat with each other. And uh, it makes really a good atmosphere and it's why it's working quite well, I think. So. Uh, not as day to come, uh, that's nice. We don't really kick people out of the channel, for example. We don't like that, that's bad. Uh, we have an ID pi wiki page where people can put the ID they want to, to see become true in the future of OpenCC in GNOME. Um, and now we've decided with OpenFate to put all the IDs that are good enough and well developed in OpenFate so that we can really track them and make sure that we don't lose track of everything. So uh, we're quite happy with OpenFace. We're really happy that it's out and that people can use it. So it's good, good, good. It's really a good way to open to the community even more. We have weekly meetings, uh, so all the usual stuff. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> we love OpenFace, really. Um, yeah, weekly meetings, um, we talk about uh, what's new, the potential issue we have, uh, what we want to do in the next week, for example, do we want to do some specific event or stuff like that? Uh, do we have some specific bugs we want to discuss, some specific features we want to discuss? People need to test something, if it, thing like that. And the important thing that we change uh, the time of the meeting. Uh, so every two weeks, we have a time shift meeting, which is I think something like five hours later. So people who are in Australia or India or Asia, they can all join and uh, because the usual meeting is fine for European and, and American people but not for Asian people or Australian for example. So we want to include everybody and we, so that's why. And so we have, we have specific events like packaging days like I already talked about. We have bug days where we have all the team going through Bugzilla, all the bugs, and okay, we look at this bug, is, is this still valid in the latest release? Do we want to upstream it? All that stuff that we should already do and we didn't do in the past actually. So now we're starting to do it really with the community. Uh, upstream, that's probably uh, one thing which I care really about. because I come from upstream actually. So uh, I want OpenCG to be really good with upstream and have one of the best relationship with upstream. So what does it mean? It means accepting upstream. Um, accepting upstream is something which uh, distribution used to not do that well actually in the past. Uh, this means when upstream does a new feature and uh, we do not like it, uh, we sometimes use to remove that feature or to change the UI, to change the, the setting, but it doesn't help us in the end, and it's something we have to maintain and that we cannot maintain. So uh, we have to accept what upstream is doing and to go really with what upstream is doing. If we don't agree, we have to do that work upstream to change what upstream is doing, not to do that in the distribution. Uh, also, one important thing that we have all the branding packages. I think it's a cool feature in OpenCC that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, it's all the settings and UI change that we do are done in a separate branding packages. Um, 
So for example, we have gconf2 branding upstream and gconf2 branding OpenSUSE. And if you want to have the default look of GNOME from upstream, you just change this package from branding OpenSUSE to branding upstream, and you're done. That's really quite awesome. And when you talk to people from upstream, I did that a lot at FOSDEM, and uh, they told me, yeah, OpenSUSE is cool, but um, I don't like the panel at the bottom. I really I want to stock upstream. And they didn't know about that. So it's uh, really no other distribution is doing that. So that's pretty cool. It's a good way to accept the stream. Uh, we want to walk upstream. So that's what I did. When we don't agree on features, walk upstream to fix that. Um, this also means when we do a patch to fix a bug, the first thing to do is not to put the patch in the package. It's to send it upstream and then put it in the package. That's quite important. That also means that when we have all the old patches from, well, since 2000, I don't know what, maybe even 90, 99 or something like that, uh, well, those patches were not set upstream. And this is bad. So we have to send all those patches upstream. We had like 700 patches in GNOME. And uh, they were, we didn't know what the status was, whether they sent upstream or not. We didn't know. So we start tagging patches with some keywords, like this is a patch for upstream, or which is specific for, for OpenSUSE, because we need to integrate with this feature of Yast, for example. Uh, this is a patch which is a feature or just a bug fix. And then we put the bug number from Bugzilla, uh, Novel Bugzilla, or bug number from GNOME Bugzilla, and with small description. So this is really, really useful to get upstream uh, all that we have and then to have less work on, on OpenSUSE. Helping upstream is also quite important. Um, a good example of that is probably uh, what I, 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 last week or two weeks ago I did a small script which exports all the, the, the tree of OpenSUSE factories so we can have all the packages and people can see the files which are in the package, like all the patches, the spec file, and they have a link to download that. So people didn't have that before. You couldn't just browse OpenSUSE, the source code. And uh, for upstream, it's quite useful to know what the distribution is doing with your module. I used to do that a lot, and I'm still doing that from my upstream point of view. When I look at GNOME panel and I want to look out at all the patches, I go on an Ubuntu website, I go on uh, the Fedora CVS, I go on Mandriva SVN, stuff like that. And I couldn't do that before without opening a build service account for OpenSUSE. And a lot of upstream people don't want to do that. They just want a simple web page. Uh, so we were not helping upstream. So I did a small script that export all that and uh, since then, we had quite some many people looking at that. Quite some, we had some people sending a small mail or on IRC just chatting and telling, oh, there's this small thing in your package which is not quite right. So this is quite useful. Um, so we want to also make it possible for upstream developers to use OpenSUSE and feel comfortable with that. So it means when they want to develop GNOME, for example, we want to make it easy for them to just install one package on one meta package or whatever, and then say, okay, now I can compile what, whatever I want from GNOME SVN. I have all the dependencies already installed. That's fine. So some black magic for them, because they don't want to care if they want to only develop one small module upstream. We have to do that to help upstream develop stuff. And we're planning to, to do all that. So the build service, um, the build service is probably something which changed completely the GNOME team. Um, because before the build service, only novel people could work on packages, and now this has changed. So we were one of the first team to really adopt completely the build service. When OpenSUSE started being completely compiled in the build service, we completely switched all the people from the GNOME team. And oh, there, there were some various reasons for that. Some people believe that it was better to use the same tools as outside contributors, which I think is true. It's a good thing. 
And there were also people which were just annoyed that they had to use some VPN to access to the internal servers and they didn't want to use a VPN or whatever. And, but the, in the end, people just wanted to have this really same level of access than all of their contributors. So uh, we started doing that. We had some issues at the beginning. We lost some change that were done in the build service, which were just disappeared in some weird ways. Uh, but we're still happy in the end. Um, we're also heavy users of it. And some people might say abusers, because um, we have tons of packages. We have more than one project. So it's a really big usage of the build service resources. That's really heavy. Um, we're trying to work on that. Um, we need to fix a few things. We might need to split the project. We don't exactly know, but yeah, we will uh, fix our resources for that. So GNOME Factory. Um, I'm not sure that everybody, everybody knows how we're working, actually, so I'll try to explain quickly. Uh, Factory is the development distribution of OpenSUSE, and it's developed in the OpenSUSE Factory in the build service. Gnome Factory is uh, the project where all the Gnome updates are done, and then when we're happy with them, we push them to uh, OpenSUSE Factory. So that's where all the action is going for the Gnome team, basically. And uh, yeah, that's where we have all the 360 whatever packages. It's moving quite fast, lots of updates, it's cool. And we, tr we are trying to make that useful for daily use. So people can just use this repository and have the latest GNOME all the time. Uh, we're working on that, and some people already start using it on their main desktop. So that's pretty cool. So, but we have GNOME Factory, but then we have GNOME Factory Next, GNOME Stable, and more. Um, so GNOME Factory Next is the next version of GNOME, the latest updates, when we cannot update in GNOME Factory because we're frozen, for example. So at the end of a development cycle, uh, when we're just in bug fix mode, and some people want to start packaging the new stuff because they get excited about the new upstream features, they can go wild and do that in GNOME Factory Next. It's what they did in, back in December, uh, so it's pretty cool. And so GNOME Factory Next is actually uh, People can just submit everything they want, and the important review is done when we merge to GNOME Factory. And then we have GNOME Stable. Um, so GNOME Stable is something we used to have and we stopped doing at some point, and we, we are starting to do that again. It's uh, just some projects to get the latest stable version of GNOME available. But for example, in OpenCC 11.1, we ship GNOME 224.1 or .2, a mix of, the, of both actually. And uh, Upstream has continued to develop to some bug fixes and has released 224.3. So uh, some users want to have that because they want to get the latest stable version of GNOME. They want just the fixes, not the new features. So we are starting to, to uh, package all that. And we plan to do that for more than uh, one distribution, actually. Uh, so right now, we are building GNOME Factory for Factory, but also for OpenCZ 11.1, which means that GNOME 226 will be installable from OpenCZ 11.1 if people don't want to upgrade. This is pretty cool. Uh, people like to not have to upgrade all the time their distribution, but they might want to have the latest GNOME. So uh, we're doing that. It's some overhead for us, but it's manageable. And user ha users are happy, so that's pretty cool. OSC GNOME, uh, this is really uh, the cool stuff of this talk, actually. Uh, really exciting. This is what made the build service really usable for us, and uh, this is how we are able to update all that stuff that quickly. So it's basically, OS, OSC is the command line which is used to manage uh, your package in the build service. And OSC GNOME is a small plugin which is not that small anymore because it's like one third of the code of OSC. So it's quite big actually. 
but the goal is to, to make it easy to manage updates, to send an update and to build the stuff and to manage from the administrator point of view of the project, GNOME Factory. So we have a few, um, we have a few subcommands. I'm missing a slide here. Um, there's a slide which uh, explains that we have some metadata on all packages. This metadata is about where is upstream located, where can I get the latest table, and with all that, we have a script which goes up on the website upstream and downloads the latest table version so we can know what is the latest upstream version. We don't have anything that does that yet in OpenCD in a general way except Marcus script, which uh, uh, gets some news, ver uh, which gets the latest version from SS feeds and stuff like that. This is a bit more uh, stronger, uh, yeah, uh, because you can put more stuff and it's really uh, reliable. So then we have OS Gnome to do. It uses this database which is on a website, and you just run that. And then you can see what's, what you can do, actually. Uh, you, you just have some free time and you want to update to a new package, so you type OS Gnome to do, and okay, I see that this package I can update to a new version. And sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's easy. When it's easy and when it's hard, the first step is to do OS Gnome update. This is really the magic command. This command does a branch of uh, the, the package in your branch of GNOME Factory. It then uh, downloads the branch, check, checking out. It then downloads the latest option version table. It then adds this table to a C, uh, to the build service, remove the old table, start updating the spec file to update the version, for example, start updating the change file to just uh, put the header say that you update to the latest change, latest option version, sorry, and uh, it extracts the news file or the change log file, it shows you a diff of what's new, and so in the best case, what you have to do is open the change file, open the diff of the news file, copy paste what's new, and commit. New done. So. What you used to do manually before, it's black magic. You just run one command and it does all that. It's really, really cool. So, this does the first part. Then, you have build submit. Build submit is also quite awesome. Uh, this is a command which takes what you have in your, your local checkout, commits it, Start a build on the local, on the build service, which means uh, we have a policy in the the branch for the GNOME Factory to not build by default, because if we, like I have like 100 packages which are branch, and uh, I don't want them to be rebuilt all the time. I just want them to be built when I need that. So uh, build service start the build, so it enables the build on the build service, and it waits. And so I can monitor what's going on. And uh, after a while, when I see that uh, it has succeeded on this architecture and on this one, it will just submit the new package to GNOME Factory. So the usual workflow you have is use OS GNOME to do. Okay? You take, okay, Pango as a new release. OS GNOME update Pango. You download the stuff for. Nothing to do, just magic. You change your local directory, cd pango. You open the dot change file. You open the diff of the news. Copy paste. OS Gnome build submit, and you're done. You let that stuff work. Uh, you do not have to monitor that if you don't want. So you can update that during the night. And uh, in the morning, you will see that it has been submitted or not to GNOME Factory. So it's pretty cool. It's a good way to update like five or ten packages at the same time without caring that much if it's easy to do. Um, this explains why we have some people who are able to do all that work easily. So with that, we enable all the community to do the hard work for us. 
which is pretty cool because, I mean, this was my goal on the first slide, do you remember? I did not want to do anything anymore. Uh, but then, actually, that's not true because we have to review all the change. We have to make sure that people are doing the right thing. And so now, what I used to do, packaging, has changed to reviewing change, which is actually not easier. Uh, it takes even more time. Uh, but the good thing is that after a while, we'll get the people who are uh, building all these packages, they will get, they will just do the right thing, package the, th the package the right way. They won't do it errors anymore, and my review will be just, oh, perfect, accept. And so I will have nothing to do anymore. So yeah, good, I will be happy. So this is really how we start building the GNOME development team in OpenSUSE. We, as you probably saw earlier, uh, we have people already doing all the weekly meetings, working on the, with Wiki, uh, working on the bug days. We, they didn't need the build service for that, but having the build service in OS GNOME made more people come and it made the, the GNOME team more alive. So it was really critical to, to success. So, um, we have the, a few people in the GNOME team, actually more than a few. On, if you look at IRC, we have probably like 60 people in average, I think, on the channel. And, uh, okay, not everybody is talking. And when you look at the stats, you have like three people who are really talking all the time. And, but, and they are not novel people, actually. So it's quite interesting. But, uh, so, we have some cool people. And the GNOME team, you have all this list of people. Uh, I won't read their name because I wouldn't be able to pronounce this one, for example, correctly, I guess. Uh, so, just to show that. And if you look at that list, uh, I think you have something like five people working at Novell on OpenSUSE. You have one person working at Novell uh, on Linux things, but, well, SLED. And all the other people are volunteers. And they are doing all, all the work, actually. Everybody there is doing all the work. And uh, so this is just a small selection. There are way, way, way many more people, actually. And I just did that list a few minutes ago, so it's not complete at all. But it shows you that we don't have just novel people and that this is just the beginning. We want more people than that in Dome team. So, yeah, but we're doing good. So that's quite cool. And also, we have two people, Federico and Brian, which uh, both of them are on the OpenCC board. So um, we're quite proud of that. That's something I didn't talk about before, but we are doing some stuff inside the GNOME team, uh, but most of the people are quite active in OpenCC in general and not just in the GNOME team. So uh, we have people who are on the board, for example. Uh, we have Magnus, who is quite involved in like just testing the, the, the distribution factory. Uh, mailing, uh, uh, helping users, stuff like that, but not just for GNOME. Uh, all those people doing the same, actually. The stuff we are doing, like OSC GNOME, well, it's good for GNOME, but truly really it's something that we want uh, the open, all OpenCC community to use. So we have to work on that to make that available to everybody, to find a good way to integrate that in OSC directly, uh, to integrate what we need to integrate in build service if we can. Uh, we want also a small script that I did to, to, to browse the open source source. It's useful for the GNOME team, it's useful for GNOME upstream, but it's also quite useful for all the people in OpenSUSE. So it's something that we want to be used, stuff like that. So uh, we're trying to do our stuff first as a prototype for the GNOME team. But then we want to extend all that to OpenCZ. What is working fine for us, I think, will work fine for other people. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I kept some time for questions, so I welcome all questions. Oh, 
microphone. Copying the packet? Is it copying the package or is it uh, creating a submit request? Uh, no, it's a build through. Uh, so build submit is um, it's commit from. I'll let you that actually. Uh, build submit. It build. It commits your stuff to your branch. It starts to build and then it does a submit request. Okay. So it detects that your package is really a branch. It looks for the develop project and commits there. Well, not the develop project, the parent. Well. I'm in uh, OpenSUSE uh, build, and I want to add a package. Uh, program, Java program from somewhere else. I have to learn all of the stuff to make RPMs and put it in. Oh, you, is your question that uh, do you have to learn how to package? Yes. Um, I want to add a, a package. Okay, to, I'll, I'll leave you that actually. Yeah, I want to add uh, a package to uh, OpenSUSE Factory or OpenSUSE 11. I, I have to learn uh, how to build RPMs. So if nobody has package uh, what you want to package, yes. Uh, but the thing is that on the build service, you already have many, many people who have packaged tons of stuff. So you're likely to find somebody who has done the work for you. Okay, maybe after the class. Yeah. So usually, I mean, usually you won't have to, to build the package, the package yourself, usually. Yeah, I will. Well, um, is the OSC GNOME command working for any any other package that the package that are available in GNOME factory? Is because, for example, if there is uh, already a package that is existing on another project from the build service, can I use this package and branch it and submit it to to the GNOME factory? So the OSC GNOME code is quite generic now. Uh, we actually have uh, other projects which are usable with it. It just uh, I just have to know which project we want to use it for that, so I can create the database on the website for that. And then uh, when you use OSC GNOME, you use your OSC GNOME dash dash project and the name of the project. So yeah, you can use it with whatever you want. We just need to know on the server side that you want to use it with this project so that we can create the database for you. Okay, and if I don't want to use the submit command, can I use it without any database? So you can use OS Signal build, yeah. which is like build submit, but it does not do the last step, which is submitting to the parent project. Okay. So you can start the build, monitor what's going on, and it will tell you if it has failed or succeeded. Great. Okay. Which is pretty cool too. Any other question? Okay, thanks.